I'm Christopher Lara with The Digital, joined by Kerry Giordano, our Director of Operations, Catherine Miller, Lead Project Manager, and Rob Delori, all around SEO enthusiast. Today, we're going to go over what e commerce platform you should be on. Kerry, Rob, Catherine, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Hey, everyone. Most listeners probably know what an e commerce platform is, but let me quickly explain what an e commerce platform is on the off chance a listener might not be sure. When we're talking about e commerce, we simply mean a website that allows the sale and purchase of services and goods over the internet. So, my question to you guys what are some of the most popular e commerce platforms and why might you pick one over the other? Okay, um, I would say the most popular ones are WooCommerce, Shopify, and Magento. Um, I personally prefer WooCommerce because um, it works with WordPress and it's fully customizable. There's tons of plugins that can help you add functionality. Um, and the one major difference I see between WooCommerce and Shopify is that it's you own your site with WooCommerce, whereas with Shopify, um, Shopify hosts it. And if you ever stop want to stop paying for hosting from Shopify, you lose your website. But with WooCommerce, you can move your site to whatever hosting platform you prefer. So, and then also um, Magento is. Uh, just a little more complicated and it can it can be good for much larger sites that need very custom functionality um, typically woocommerce can do anything magento can do but i understand some businesses prefer magento um, but again my personal preference is woocommerce well, uh, Christopher, I'm a big fan of e-commerce and all of the platforms that are out there. And when we're trying to decide which is best for which company, you really need to have a solid understanding of how the business is going to transact and what exactly it's selling. I mean, for example, when we're talking about Magento, a lot of companies started adopting Magento because it was one of the big uh, players that came out early on and really was heavily focused on just being an e-commerce platform. Now, uh, this was great, but what you ended up with was really more than a lot of businesses needed. I mean, when I think about Magento, I'm usually thinking either very big enterprise or something where your uh, delivery system is so integrated or you know, with a, an ERP system for inventory, or that there's usually a lot of technicalities involved where somebody looks and says, okay, let's go ahead and look at Magento for X, Y, and Z reasons. Uh, Kerry talking about WooCommerce, very um, far more basic, but still a robust system that's good enough for, I'd say, 80% of the e-commerce websites that are out there. But I, I always like to look at it from the standpoint of how are you utilizing it? Because we're talking about specific platforms for e-commerce. I mean, there's companies out there that utilize uh, Amazon as their e-commerce. Uh, it, it really is a matter of just how do you want to go ahead and do business? So I don't want to sit here and say that, well, I think that WooCommerce is the best for 80% of businesses and 80% of the businesses should go ahead and utilize it. It really comes down to that research. Yeah, and I can um, kind of jump in and talk more about uh, why you might want to, to utilize something like Shopify. So on the flip side of what Carrie was talking about, you might want to utilize WooCommerce because you have the hope you can handle the hosting. You are in charge of all of your files. You own it. Shopify might be a really great solution for someone who wants managed hosting, who wants to be a little less hands-off. So you've got a local store. You don't want to be dealing with, you know, the tech all day long or dealing with a tech company. You just want it to work. That's the most important thing. So Shopify is a really great solution for that out of the box. Like I know my website will always be working. I just pay Shopify a monthly fee and I'm good. Um, so I think it's a really great solution for people that want ease of use as their top priority. And um, like Carrie mentioned, the 
customization is a lot less lacking on Shopify. You, you have to um, install a lot of different applications, which usually have a monthly cost if you want to do some custom stuff. But I would say for a lot of um, smaller store owners or people with just a, you're purchasing an item, maybe it has a few variables, but that's really all you're doing. Shopify is a really great solution uh, for that particular use case. So just like what Rob was saying, you have to not just look at what's the percentage of people using each of these different stores. It's like, what do I want from my store? What are the most important things for me? Do I like to fiddle with tech or do I hate to fiddle with tech? See, I'm becoming a very big fan of Shopify because they've made so many changes over the last few years. Uh, it, it, it used to be, oh, I also need an e-commerce. Shopify has become a, a standalone website platform that is absolutely strong in the sense of e-commerce, but you know, I was always hesitant to recommend it as a blogging platform as well. If, if you're looking for something that can be your central uh, website, Shopify really has provided a lot of great tools. And me being on the SEO side, they've really started giving us a lot of tools for what it is that we need to do to get it to rank well. So no, I, I'm, um, big commerce, Shopify, they've all come a long way in, in, in that sense. Is it fair to say that Shopify has the lowest uh, cost to entry? Oh, um, I, I, again, for that, that's a tough one to answer because everybody will always come up with, well, I've gone ahead and I've got other websites already set up and it costs me almost nothing to add a template and I can do WooCommerce myself. The answer is yes, that would be the cheapest option. I mean, Shopify has a base monthly service that you have to pay. So I think it's incredibly competitive. And in most instances, I could say it's the lowest cost. But I, I, I always hate being called on the carpet. Yeah. And I would also um, say one issue with Shopify in terms of it. It seems like the lowest cost out of the box, kind of like we were talking about. But you can get really quickly add jack up that price with the application add-ons. So you're like, oh, I need to add a mega menu and it doesn't come with my theme. Or I need to add this particular shipping thing. And now you're paying $10 a month, $20 a month, adding those on. And, you know, that can get expensive quickly. If, if I could jump on that one as well, because with Shopify, the cost long term, if you have a WordPress website, we all know there's a lot of maintenance that goes in that because it's, it's basically your platform. You're, you're taking it over, you're running it, and you need to keep up with that. Shopify takes care of the maintenance of the platform. It's included in that. So um, I, I don't want to say it's, it's a magic bullet when it comes to this, but 99% of things, Shopify is taking care of the security updates and things of that sort. When it comes to SEO friendliness, is one platform better than the other or are they all equal? Well, I, I used to say that WordPress with WooCommerce, it was the most SEO friendly, but I really can't uh, come out and say that definitively anymore. Again, They've all been providing the, uh, the tools necessary in the last few years. So title tags, uh, you know, control over redirects, things of that sort. All of these platforms have that now. So I, I don't want to go ahead and say that that is the case anymore. I, I really think that they're all basically equal in that manner. Catherine, can you, can you speak to, does Shopify have a plugin similar to Yoast? Yes. Yep. It's got built-in um, meta tags and that you can edit just like you can with Yoast. So um, I don't think it's quite as robust as all of the, the millions of options that Yoast has, but that basic, you know, meta title the, and the description, all of that um, does come right out of the box with Shopify. Okay. But I'm, I'm going to jump in and get controversial because I only use Yoast for a very few items, uh, some of those technical items, which I'm really surprised WordPress hasn't come out with on their own. And I know we're getting a little farther away, Christopher, but for, for me, um, I, like you said, Shopify and the rest, they are providing the ones that we use the most often with Yoast anyways. Again, still big fan of Yoast, but th there's so many things in there that people are trying to utilize that red green, yellow, light, and all of that. I tried to tell people to steer away from that anyway. So. Yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's a lesson in futility sometimes. And so uh, as far as I'm concerned, those other platforms are providing the similar tools that I'm using almost day to day with for Yoast anyways. Yep. Another nice thing that Shopify has built in that could help with SEO and in terms of a page speed uh, issue is that it does have an automatic CDN, which is a content delivery network that basically helps to serve content faster uh, and increase your uh, speed gains from cached content. So that's a helpful thing. I Shopify forgot has. about that. You're right. That's a big advantage. <laughs> But that's also something you can add to WooCommerce, you know, so it's not that you can't do that with other platforms. Again, it's that like out of the box. Now you can't customize what you're doing with it. You just have to live with what they give you unless you pay additional things. So then in WooCommerce or Magento, you could really customize your CDNs and you could have a lot of hands-on interactions. Like that's what I feel like is the big stark difference is how much customization just at the end of the day. Yeah, now we're compa comparing hosting versus the software. It or the, the web application, you know, because the CDN, if you have a WordPress website, you know, you turn the CDN on, on the server or at the server level, if your hosting provider has that, I mean, you can also do it manually or separately, but now I think we're comparing Shopify's hosting with say WP Engine's hosting, like WP Engine also has a CDN option for WordPress websites. But, but that is kind of the point is if you're making these decisions, you don't want to make a decision based upon, you know, hey, this says the the easiest way to set up your merchant account. I mean, you, you, you really want to look at this for your business. You have to think about hosting. You have to think about yearly costs. Um, what does it cost to maintain it? Do you need a developer ongoing to be able to go ahead and address this? Like I said, Shopify, more simplified. Uh, if you have to get a developer involved, you have to find somebody who knows Liquid. Now, if you're talking about WordPress, well, there's lots of WordPress developers out there. And no matter how you you know, carve it out, Magento is going to cost you more in the long run, no matter what you're doing. But it's the best for enterprise. Yeah, that's a good point, too, the cost of the developer. So a Magento developer is typically much more expensive than a WordPress developer. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly sure how Shopify compares. Um, I mean, we do both WooCommerce and Shopify. So with us, it's not more expensive. Um, but yeah, that's another thing to consider is the the cost of, the per, of the, your resource that you need to maintain the site. And, and again, Knowing those details going in, it, it really comes down to, for example, with Magento, WordPress, every time we do updates, it's a matter of clicking that button and then going ahead and making sure that everything's still working properly. Magento comes along, okay, you've already paid for the website, you've already paid for everything. Magento 2.0 comes along, okay, you can't even use your old website. You can't click that little update button. Now you have to start the whole project over basically from scratch, which factors into that higher development cost. So again, I, I'm, we're talking about e-commerce. We're talking about the best thing for business. It really has to do with understanding where you're coming from. Do you have an existing uh, website? You need to be able to evaluate that because the migration involved. Or is this brand new starting out? Where do you see your business in three years? All of that has to be taken into account. In terms of scalability, is one platform better than the other? I don't mean to keep tooting Shopify's horn, but I do know that Shopify is really easily scalable and you can upgrade to their kind of pro edition. I forgot the exact terminology they use. Um, but since you're on their hosting and their hosting is really robust, you're never going to hit like a sudden wall um, where you can no longer support that hosting and actually need to move to a completely new hosting provider, which is something that does sometimes happen um, with WordPress or Magento. But again, you're going to pay, you know, you, you can't negotiate a better deal. You're paying whatever Shopify wants you to pay. So, and if they decide to increase rates or they decide to do anything, you're at their mercy. So if you don't like that, you know, there'd be a reason to get off of them. Right. And with Magento and WooCommerce, again, you can host anywhere. So it's really more looking at when you're, when you're choosing your hosting provider, you know, and thinking long-term about your business, if you do think you're going your business is going to take off and your website is going to, you know, triple its bandwidth needs and traffic needs, 
then definitely make sure you're with a good hosting provider that's going to make it an easy transition if you need to migrate your site to a dedicated server. Um, and, and I'm going to go with Catherine on that as well. I mean, the, the point of entry for Shopify and the expandability over, you know, over the next few years, it, you always run into that. I mean, Magento is going to be a high uh, front end cost, but you can basically just, as I said, go up to enterprise level. Uh, if you're starting out with WooCommerce and uh, WordPress, it, there is a certain point where there's just too many products bogging things down, the search functionality and all of that. Shopify really makes it easy to be able to go ahead and start it. Hey, I want to start this at $30 per month. If two months later you're finding so much traffic, so much products, hey, go ahead and load 5,000 products in there. Shopify doesn't care. <laughs> so I, I really like Shopify for the unknowns of expandability. Whereas WordPress is more, what else do you want to do with the website? You, you can add so much more functionality more easily than Shopify because Shopify is still um, something that inherently is that e-commerce and you can add on and build out, but there's a lot more unknowns that go along with that. I hope I'm describing that okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd love yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, go on, oh, that makes sense. Um, you know, something to consider with WordPress and WooCommerce, if you're not just an e-commerce store, if you're also an event planner and, uh, you know, a blogger, or if you have a career portal, like things like that are, can all be on the same website using WordPress and WooCommerce, whereas Shopify is primarily an e-commerce platform. You can also blog with it. And I'm sure there's other plugins, but probably or uh, Catherine can speak better to, uh, you know, more complicated API integrations and things like that might not be available for Shopify. Yeah, I would absolutely second that. So uh, you do have a blog, a built-in blog on Shopify. I think that's a newer feature. Um, there are the way that they allow you to categorize that is not as extensive as WordPress. So you basically have to be, I think it's like slash blog slash your category name. I mean, it has to have a category name. So you're always going to have a slightly long URL, which is a little funky. Um, whereas WordPress, you could have a blog with it at virtually any URL you want. Um, and then you've, you're hooked into specific categorization rules. Um, and to just really expand on the, the APIs, you if you have any third party software that you need to bring in and you're thinking about moving to Shopify, you're thinking about moving to WordPress, I would double check both. Now WordPress, I think, you're definitely going to have something built out. If there's an API that exists, you're going to be able to hook it up uh, to your WordPress site. Shopify has someone built it. If not, you're probably pretty out of luck um, unless you want to pay lots and lots and lots of money to have someone develop it for you and then maintain it forever, which would be you know, quite ridiculous, probably not something that you're going to want to do. So anytime that you're doing anything other than just an online store, some pages with a little bit of content and maybe a blog, I think you're going to put yourself in a tough situation if you go with Shopify. That's where WordPress is really going to shine. In terms of payment options, are is there any difference or limitations between one platform and the other, or are they basically the same? Like this, are your, for instance, um, the cut that or the transaction fees you'd have to pay for Shopify, are they higher than, let's say, Magento? Shopify has a built-in payment gateway that would be um, probably higher. I think it's 2 or 3% um, off the top of my head. But then when you start using those third-party um, applications, then it's just whatever their rates are. So that would just be dependent on, on their rates, which will probably be similar to using those payment gateways with WooCommerce. Right. And with WooCommerce, um, most of the payment gateway add-ons like Stripe, PayPal, and all those are free because Stripe and PayPal and authorize.net offer that ex those WooCommerce extensions for free. So it's just whatever um, charges they have, the transaction fees that they normally have. Cool. I think the one last uh, big thing uh, to consider when picking an e-commerce site is security. Uh, when it comes to security, are there any limitations or differences between the three platforms we've been talking about? On WordPress, there's, you know, a number of security plugins, and it also greatly depends on your hosting provider. Um, so you want your servers to be 
there's server security and then there's site security and then there's there's things that any website needs like strong passwords um, and things like that to make it secure. Um, maybe Catherine can speak more about Shopify. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure as much about the security of your actual platform on Shopify. I would imagine that's pretty robust just because they're um, a really large hosting provider. So that's going to have to be robust unless they want to bring down all Shopify sites. But I know one thing that's really nice that draws people to Shopify is that the customer checkout is PCI compliant. So that's the payment card industry compliance. Um, and that's right out of the box. So that's, again, just another thing that's kind of convenient. I'm an SEO guy, so I never think about payments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking time out of your busy day for joining me. I think that's a great place to stop. And for anyone looking to implement or update their e-commerce, the digital offers an entire suite of e-commerce website and shopping cart development solutions for established businesses. When you hire us for your e-commerce project, you can expect more than just an online store and payment processor. You can expect a user-friendly design that will convert visitors into paying customers. Visit thedigital.com to get in touch. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. It was good seeing you guys. You guys yeah. have a great day. <laughs>